Hello dear students, good morning. Today we are going to discuss our second chapter in social science, the heat zones. What is the meaning of heat? Chood, isn't it? The heat zones. So what are the heat areas in our earth? We are going to discuss. So before going to the section, let me ask one thing. Do you know what is climate and what is weather? They sound similar, isn't it? Two of them have same meaning, Kalavasta, isn't it? So there is a difference between them, weather and climate. Weather is the atmospheric condition of one day or a very short time. For example, today it is sunny day. We are receiving enough amount of sunlight. So it is sunny day today. Maybe tomorrow it's, it will be a rainy day or a cloudy day. So weather conditions for a particular time or the atmospheric condition for a very small period of time that is called weather if it is a long period of time for example one year we can say england england is a temperate region one day they are receiving uh, sun uh, the next day means one day it will be hot there the next day it will be cold there so maybe it is continuing as so for many years it is continuing. So we are telling, if we are telling the average weather conditions for a year, it is the climate. And if it is for a very short time, it is weather. Indonesia have a, what we can say, hot as well as dry and wet. Hot and wet. Hot and wet conditions. So this is the difference between weather and climate. Weather denotes a very short period of time. Climate is the atmospheric conditions or the conditions in the weather for a very long period of time. Hope you understood the difference between weather and climate. Now, what are the factors we are checking at the time of we are considering the weather or climate? We will be considering the temperature. What is temperature? Temperature. Maybe you heard that when you are brought to a doctor, when you have fever, he'll be telling that you have uh, how much? Maybe 41 degrees Celsius or 51 degrees Celsius according to the hot. And you know the water that boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So this is the temperature. If you have a electrical stove, do you know what it is? So if you have a such a stove means easy cook or some, something like that. Maybe you have seen that 1200 degrees Celsius. You can add and put according to your need. You can place 1200 degrees Celsius in that easy cook. Isn't it? So this is the temperature measurement of how much hot or how much cold. In your fridge it will be below zero in the upper portion that is in the fridge zone. There you can see minus 1 degree, minus 2 degree, minus 2 degree Celsius. Like this you can see. So that is the measurement of how much hot or how much cold a substance is. In the case of weather or climate we will be considering the atmosphere. How much heat, hot it is, how much cold it is. Nowadays it is almost 27 degree Celsius here. Atmospheric conditions here. Now air pressure. Air pressure means how thick the air is or how far the air is. So that is air pressure. Humidity, the amount of water in the air, just go through this section only. Don't want to get confused with these things. Clouds, is there any cloud in the sky? We will be looking for that. Is there any wind? Is there any rainfall? So according to these things, will be defining what is the weather condition of that particular day. If the winds are present, we'll say, and if there is cloud, we'll say it's a cloudy as well as windy day. If, if we are receiving high amount of rainfall the same day, we'll be telling that it's a rainy day. If you are receiving a lot of heat from the sun, you can say it's a sunny day. So according to these things, according to the temperature, air pressure, humidity, humidity means content of water, clouds, winds and rainfall, we can tell the average conditions of our atmosphere. So these factors are important when we are telling the climatic conditions or weather conditions of a particular region. Now on the 
basis of heat received by the earth we classify our earth into three zones torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone now let us look to the picture of earth we know our earth is surrounding the sun isn't it so sun is here and our earth will be here our earth is here see from the sun the middle portion see here from the sun the middle portion receives more sunlight so it will be more hot in which place in the center region what is this center line called it's called equator so in the equatorial region earth receives more heat and towards the north pole and south pole we receives less heat isn't it it is very difficult to the sun's rays to reach here because it is very much far away these lines are very short the sun's ray will reach here or sunlight will reach here very fastly but at the same time the sunlight takes many time to reach in the south pole or north pole so that is why this equator region or the central region receives more heat and that's why it is called torrid zone what it is called torrid zone torrid zone not torrid torrid zone okay and the portion above torrid zone is called temperate zone temperate zone temperate zone and the portion below the torrid zone is also known as temperate zone so it is easy the center region is called torrid zone and portion above the torrid zone is called temperate zone here this portion is also called temperate zone so two temperate zones are there here above the equator and below the equator there is torrid zone and in the north pole and south pole there is frigid zone so these are the three zones see one torrid here another torrid is here so two torrids are there in total we can call torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone so these are the three zones in our earth this classification is made on the basis of how much heat it does receives from the figure it is it is clear that which zone will be receiving more heat obviously torrid zone because it is more closer to sun സണ്ണിൻ്റെ ഏറ്റവും അടുത്തുള്ള പോർഷനാണ് എന്ത് ടൊറിഡ് സോൺ ഇവിടെയാണ് സണ്ണിൽ നിന്ന് കൂടുതൽ സൺലൈറ്റ് എത്തുന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ട് ഈ സ്ഥലത്താണ് ഏറ്റവും കൂടുതൽ ചൂടുണ്ടാവുന്നത് ഇവിടേക്ക് എത്തുമ്പോൾ സണ്ണിൽ നിന്നുള്ള ദൂരം കൂടി ഇവിടേക്ക് എത്തുമ്പോൾ പിന്നെയും കൂടി സണ്ണിൽ നിന്നുള്ള ദൂരം പിന്നെയും കൂടി സോ ദീസ് റീസിയൻ റിസീസ് ലെസ് സൺലൈറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കമ്പാരിറ്റീവ്ലി ലെസ് ലെസ് ഇൻ ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ ദാൻ ദ ടൊറിഡ് സോൺ സോ വി ഹാവ് ത്രീ സോൺസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദ heat it receives first one is torrid zone second one is temperate zone third one is frigid zone and above the equator also we have torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone and if it is in the south it is called south frigid south temperate south torrid if it is in the north it is called north torrid north temperate north frigid zone Okay in the next class we will be taking more about the torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone thank you for watching maybe if you have any doubt sometimes you may be having doubt in the sections of this heat based on heat how we classify the zones if you have any doubt you can contact your teachers concerned okay thank you for watching have a nice day